There has been a lot of interest over the last five years of thrombotic, of transplant-associated thrombotic microangiopathy, or TATMA for short. Now, transplant-associated thrombotic microangiopathy probably is part of a spectrum of what we call endothelial damage syndromes. It is caused by either the conditioning regimen or the medications we give to prevent graft-versus-host disease, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, or infectious complications. There is a spectrum of TATMA from just mild elevations of liver function tests or uh, creatinine or LDH and occasional schistocytes to a severe full-blown renal failure, uh, florid uh, total body edema, and eventually organ failure and death. Many of us believe that it's important to identify TATMA early. We think that it is being underdiagnosed. And currently, there may be potential strategies to prevent it or mitigate the damage it has. We and others have now tried to develop a TATMA working group where we will try to identify criteria to be able to validate those criteria and to develop guidelines to do interventional and prevention studies in the future. It is important that we recognize how to diagnose the disease accurately so that we can do these studies. So people have asked, so what can we do for somebody who has or who I suspect has TATMA? So the most important thing is to identify the potential cause. Is it a viral infection? Or is it calcineurin inhibitor toxicity? Is it toxicity from the conditioning regimen? And in that situation, you treat the underlying cause. You treat the viral infection, you adjust the doses of the calcineurin inhibitor. If it is just because of damage done by the conditioning regimen, then the question is, is there anything you can do to revert the damage of the endothelial cells or enhance its recovery? There are um, there's no commercially available drugs for this. There are drugs that are currently in exploration. Some of them are drugs that uh, protect the endothelium, such as defibrotide, others that uh, inhibit complement activation, such as ecolusumab. None of these drugs have been approved commercially for these indications, but they're currently being explored in clinical trials.